Hey everyone, this episode is going to be a fantastic one for those of you who are looking to improve your block outs and how to best sell that of emotions through geometry. Hey everyone, I hope you're well playing and are making the games that you all love. You're joining me, your host, senior level designer Max Pears, where I get to talk to all of you incredible game gurus. All of you should know by now, but if you're new, let me just tell you, the podcast is here to help all of us who love and are passionate about that beauty that we call level design. We're talking about elements such as different ways to block out, interviewing incredible industry guests, and much, much more. This one, however, as I mentioned at the very start of the show, is going to be about your blockouts and how we can improve on those. Now, most of us know a lot about blockout scenes, some of the that of the videos out there on the internet, incredible resources out there. So I really want to help add a little bit more kind of context. An extra kind of wisdom, shall we say, to that of your blockouts and how we can overall improve those. Now, just before we get into it, I just want to say that I hope you are all well and I hope your loved ones are well too, because this podcast is nothing without all of you. So I always think it's important to ask how you're doing and I hope you're having a great morning, evening or night whenever you are listening to this show. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. For those of you who do not know, I've actually teamed up with CGMA, one of the best courses to learn about level design, and I'll be teaching this. Not only will you get to receive feedback from myself, but you'll have incredible lectures by Amelia Schatz, if you don't know, is one of the lead level designers over at Naughty Dog. I've mentioned this course to you many of times because I took this back in 2019, so to be able to actually help and teach this course is a great honor for me, but also a great opportunity for many of you. This course is starting, or I should say this term is starting in July. So if you want to sign up now, there'll be a link down in the description below. Sign up, you've got 10 weeks of incredible level design resources to help you, and this can help at any level, skill set, or range. So if you're looking to improve your level design skills, then join me this summer at the CGMA Level Design course. A link to this will be down in the description below. Now here, there is a lot of questions that are often asked about blockouts, white boxing, many different terms. I'm going to refer to it as blockout just for the sake of this episode. As I mentioned earlier, there's different ways that you can refer to it. But blocking out by using that of such tools as Blender, Maya, even that of Pro Builder on Unity, or you using your level kit pieces as well. It's this kind of element where there is no art, there is no lighting. It's this, the very start of the actual level itself that we can all see and present and actually play through as well. These are the elements that we're going to be talking about when I'm going on about how to improve, where we can improve, and what can be improved as well. So let's talk about what is the purpose of a block out first so as to all understand and get us on the same page. Block out, as I mentioned, is where we have now gathered all the necessary information. We understand what the brief of the mission is. We understand what it is that we need to deliver, where this location is taking place. We have all of this vital and crucial info stored away for us to go off and use, taken from the references and understand again how it is that we are going to be able to use those and actually create it. Now, as I mentioned, there's different ways that we plot out, as I talked about earlier with the, the Maya and your LD kit pieces. So we now are going to start to block it out, right? And this one is going to be about, again, why, how, where we're kind of blocking all of this together. Now, when I'm talking about this to all of you incredible people, I'm talking about the baseline, right? You're going to be making that of a room, a building, all of this with your block out pieces, making sure it delivers the space for gameplay, cinematics, delivering the story, an overall kind of flow, if you will, for that of the mission, okay? So it's kind of the foundation upon which levels will actually be built upon further, okay? Now, from here, we're going to be talking about going a bit further. So I'm presuming all of you 
who are listening to this have done a white boxing or blocked out a level before, okay? Of actually how to do it. I'm not going to go over in detail, but it's more about how we can improve them, right? The first way that we can actually go off and improve them is by, as I mentioned earlier, the references and making sure that this space, whether this be some sort of cave in the wilderness or that of a factory in a city, actually looks like this. A lot of the time we can make these more boxy kind of, of layouts, right? And there isn't necessarily something wrong with it being boxy because due to some buildings, that's how it looks. But we need to make sure it delivers and has a strong architectural style and presence. If this is in kind of like a rundown area, then this factory is going to be rather simple. We understand that maybe it doesn't need any flair. But if it's kind of in a more rich, high-end kind of spot, then there's going to be more flourishes around that kind of architecture. So we need to make sure that it has that, whether that being sort of curved walls, angled walls, certain sort of structural supports, these elements should be considered, right? Because a lot of time, especially in open world games, there's going to be a lot of buildings that players won't ever be able to actually visit or go through, okay? So you need to make sure that it's clear, again, what the building actually is, and that it is going to be one that catches the player's eye to make players want to actually go in and visit this area, okay? So when you're doing this, sell this. Imagine we're creating that of, say, like a, a greenhouse, right? Now, at first, you may want to just use your, your building blocks, right? It's important to use those, so you want to use it. But if we just use those building blocks, it could end up looking or feeling like a bunker because it doesn't have any way for light to pass through and go over to feed and grow the plants that you find in say, some sort of greenhouse. So in that way, we need to make sure that although it is to metrics, so you may want to start with just the first building blocks of making it, it may look bunkerish, but you're starting out to get the metrics right. But then you want to go off and revisit and then change it to maybe a glass facade. Simple thing like that will help sell, again, the vision. It's on us, because even though it's not going to go and be a pretty level, we really want to sell those elements. So think about that. First rule for this is the architectural style and presence. Making sure this building fits within your universe, as well as is attractable to the eye for that of the player. At Lover Design Lobby, we believe everybody has a story to tell. Hobbyist or student, freelancer or veteran, we made it our mission to unite those who share our passion for creating and developing great games. Thanks to our generous Patreon backers, we've been able to do just that. So if you've already pledged your support, thank you. If not, you too can ensure the future of Level Design Lobby helping us to create even more exciting content, collaborations, interviews, and much more. With awesome perks and rewards, whether you're a seasoned professional or just getting started, you're sure to find something for you. Want to share tips, tricks, and advice with passionate, like-minded developers? Our awesome community Discord has you covered. Fancy practicing your level design, creating strong portfolio content, and having fun? Then try our level design weekends. Or perhaps you want to individually discuss your work, hone your skills, or level up your career. Then consider our one-on-one -on -one mentorships. If you share our vision, then go to patreon.com forward slash level design lobby for more information and to pledge your support. Thank you. Now the second rule is going to be that of making it clear what the rooms are. Now this will come down to your pipeline with your overall team, okay? So keep this in mind because I don't want you to go off the beaten path and irritate any anyone because it's, it's on your leads and seniors and directors to make sure that you understand your pipeline your level flow right but what i'm going with this is a lot of time we can just place boxes right and then give it to art and try figure that for them to to go figure out for us that isn't how i want anyone listening to this podcast to act and also myself you'll see if you've seen my spider-man level my art gallery level as well as the stealth level I try and make it clear what each space is, okay? I try and make it absolutely understandable and readable that this space is a bedroom, bathroom, storage unit, all of these, because of I do these kind of small LD props. You know, they match the same color as the building blocks that we have, but maybe they're a little bit more detailed than your average one. Now, again, keep in mind that 
Your bosses may not want you to do that just due to how your pipeline is. But if you have some freedom, go into those elements, sell that space. If it's an art gallery, let's again, sell all of that, making you have the paintings, just basic things on the wall, just simple flattened cubes to sell that, all right? So really, again, similar to what we talked about, the exterior and the architectural presence, you want to sell roughly what the space is. But also make it clear as well for the artists that this is just, you know, your layout's there for a purpose of gameplay. But to the artists, you know, if they want to modernize or make it look more kind of run down, they have the freedom to do that. So again, sell and make it clear what each space actually is for that of the player. Now here comes the more kind of details, the more nuanced elements to focus on to help raise your actual block out itself, okay? And the first one, this is play around with height, okay? One of the things that a friend of mine said to me, and I think I've already referenced it, but if I haven't, I think it's a good point to reference with you all here, is that a lot of time with more inexperienced level designers, they keep their levels very flat. So if you're able to play around with the height a bit, separate the level through different heights, whether that means us as players going through multiple floors or that of just having a raised area by a meter, this can really help separate your space make it very clear to all of those around who are playing the purpose of each space, right? And this is important. This is a thing many of us can actually look over, but it's not just about how wide, how long a level can be. We get to play with height as well. So never neglect that as this can be an important element for it. You can always just randomly add in height but it shouldn't just be about randomly adding it in. Make sure it's got a purpose. As I said, not all spaces will actually need it, but if you're able to convey it in a successful and powerful way of it actually having a purpose, trust me, that's going to make your levels stand out quite a lot. The next is making sure that the geometry matches that of the emotional theming. Last month we talked about theming, right? So this is kind of building on what we said. If you haven't, go check out last month's episode, I'll have a link to it down below so you can go and see what I talk about when I mention that. In theming, we want to know that you are a kind of emotional, pay off the emotional journey that the player is going through when they're playing our level, right? It's really important to gather that information. So let's think about how we can actually build that. Whether if we want the player to feel trapped, okay, well then our corridors should be extra tight. Maybe the roof should be lower. Maybe we should actually make the players crawl through the spaces, okay? By changing these elements, you can instantly start to create an emotional reaction out of players. If we want them to feel in danger, then we should have more kind of sharp, rugged cutting areas in that of the, say, the walls or a cliff face, making it feel more dangerous. If we want the player to feel safe, then maybe instead of 90 degree angles, we can have more of those soft curved walls Again, making the player feel that they are gently being guided instead of just a harsh turn. These small elements, again, can really just push at it. Go look up the psychology. Well, just psychology in general, I think it's a great subject. But if you can look at things as color theory, shape theory, all of these are subconsciously communicating with the actual player themselves. So take a look into that and see what we can do with it. Take a look at different architecture styles as well. When you've got the brutalistic style of, say, the old communist Soviet Union, you can see how they just feel empty and lifeless. And yet when you've got the more modern buildings that you may see over, um, when I think about the the Shard or the, the Gherkin, I think it's called, over in London, it starts to have a bit of character and it has a different kind of emotional reaction. If you want to think about making a place feel grander, a certain space in your level, then you can use techniques such as pinching, which refers to that of before we get to that grand space, we make a really tiny space. So that way, instead of we're going from one big space to another big space, where everything feels the same. If you have one big space, a small tiny space, and then a big space, it makes that reveal feel even bigger than before. These elements, again, small little things, can go and improve your levels tenfold by 
much more thought process put into the actual motion through it too. Now this is where I'm going to stop. I know it's a shorter episode. I'm still getting back into the flow of the elements now that I'm, I'm back to business with the beautiful, amazing people like yourselves. But again, I'm just kind of easing back into it. There'll probably be some more in this. I hope that you did like it. If you do think you have other elements you think that can really help improve the blockouts, then share them. Put them down in the comments below. Tweet them at me. Email me in. My Twitter is at Max Pairs. My email is leveldesignlobby at gmail.com. So if you want all that, come on through. Now, if you really want to help support the show to make sure that we're constantly producing more amazing stuff, then if you're coming through by the power of YouTube, subscribe, any podcasting app, subscribe and rate the show. This helps promote it. And if you want to help even further, then please head over to patreon.com forward slash level design lobby. All of that will be down in the description below. So thank you all very much. I I hope you've taken away a few good elements to help go off and actually improve your blockouts. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Take care and I'll catch you all next time.